Yeah. Anyway. All right, here we go. So we've got our creature. We've got them placed. But there might be things that are looking off or getting in the way. So internal compositing goes beyond just making little slivers to cover up our creature. We might actually need to move more aspects of the, uh, of the landscape and do more internal compositing. So I'm looking at my creature. Everything looks good, except that foot shouldn't be so visible in such uneven terrain, right? These feet are made for a flat ground. He is not on flat ground. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my close foreground and I am going to grab a chunk of this jello crystal stuff. And duplicate it. So first we simplified our layers and now we're, we're using them where they're going to be most effective. I still have auto select turned off because I have a lot of atmosphere. And then I'm going to sync that back. and scale it. And I don't want it to look too, very scientific term, copy pasty. Right? So I let it distort a little bit. I might even uh, try flipping it. And I'm going to use this element to obscure that back foot. Try rotating it. So I think this is what I need. Okay, now, because I made that element new, I can erase away from it. And this is an easy way to do that. I go to my creature layer and I know where, where I want that element to overlap. It's just in here. So I go to my creature layer and I use my magic wand, select all the space around my creature, right? And then use my lasso and hold down option and deselect. So this is subtracting from that selection, that foot that I want it to overlap. just like so. And now, let's see, add this in. Get that little bit. Okay, now I'm going to take that negative space there it is and I'm going to copy that from this so move my layer so now I'm just copying that shape from this and then deleting the one behind and that will cut out that front foot of mine nicely right and by doing that, oh, let's see, do I, what am I missing there? No, that actually works. Okay. So by doing that, I can play with the opacity, you know, of the terrain. I can darken it. I might play with the levels. This is still of the environment. This is underneath my creature, right? So it's going to make sense that its midtones are darker and that its highlights are limited because it's in shadow. But you see how that does a nice job obscuring that back foot. And all those bright highlights back there. And I might like it so much that I clone stamp a little bit of that. I'm gonna do the current layer so it only clone stamps from this little crystal thing I'm doing. I just carry it over 
into this background. So this is just finding ways not to distract from my creature and its placement. The next thing, I might want to hide where my where the foot is touching here. It doesn't really have anything to sit on there. So I might do the same trick again, take my close foreground, grab some element of it. Let's see, maybe what do I want? Yeah, this bit in here. I want you to feel free to play with this stuff. And move that. We're doing a lot of internal compositing. Adding our own textures into the background. So I move that over to overlap with the foot the way I want. And now I'm going to sync it behind. Right. And now I just need to blend it in with that environment. I get to use all my compositing tricks. Just got to wait for the computer to catch up with me. And I don't want it to look copy pasty, so I want to transform it. Come on, catch up. And the eraser has taken a while. There we go. And I am going to free transform it, scale it down behind these rocks. And let's try uh, distort, let's tilt its top edge down a little bit. Uh, what do I want? Maybe warp. So that is helping. So now that foot is nicely nestled. Okay, then I can play with its levels. And this time I just want it to kind of match the lighting around. So I'm going to brighten it just a little bit so it's catching more light and deepen its shadows just a little bit. This is all without making any changes to my creature, just changing the environment. So I've added quite a few things. I've added this, the rocks in front of the feet. I've added this, the rocks in front of the front foot. I've added this, the rocks behind the creature. And I've added this, the rock in front of that other foot. Now, there's no reason those all need to be separate layers. I can merge those all together. And we can call those rocks <laughs> at the feet. And ideally, we could turn off our creature, and that doesn't hurt our landscape to have those rocks. Right? In fact, it might even make it a little bit more engaged. But our creature is the reason for them. The next thing we can think about the environment is the shadows and the lighting. So before we start working on the, the color balance and the levels of our creature itself, because we have to rasterize it to do that, we want to think about where would we see shadows in the environment. So where is light hitting? Well, it's hitting the clouds at the top. It's hitting my creature at the top. So there's going to be shadows underneath. So what can I do? Well, I am going to put a new blank layer. And I'm going to call this my gradient overlay layer. This is a new skill. And I'm putting it directly underneath my creature. So here's my creature. Directly underneath that is my gradient overlay layer. I'm going to mark that yellow, just so you can see it really clearly. Then I'm going to fill that layer, edit fill, with 100%, 50% gray at normal mode. And you're going to see it's going to block out the whole background. It's going to block out everything except the things that are immediately covering up my creature. right? But on top of it, you'll see all that atmosphere 
and all of our texture overlays. Now, why is it called a gradient overlay? Well, what we're going to do is set that to overlay mode, which actually makes it so it doesn't look like anything at all. Because on an overlay mode layer, a layer style of over or a layer mode of overlay, anything darker than middle gray will darken everything below it. Anything lighter than middle gray will lighten everything below it. But anything at middle gray will do absolutely nothing to anything below it. So this is what we can uh, use to dodge and burn without changing any of the pixels of our landscape or of our creature. So this is going to be my landscape gradient overlay. This is where I'll add shadows. So what do I do? I have it on overlay mode, but I'm going to use the burn tool. I'm going to make it affect the midtones. Nice, big, soft edge brush. It can be a hard edge brush, depends on your environment. And the exposure is going to be less than 20, but pretty strong. And now it's only going to affect the things behind my creature, right? So it's not going to affect the things in front of my creature. It's going to affect all these rocks behind. And you can see how it's darkening, darkening, darkening. Now, along with darkening it, you can see that that's making the colors a little bit more intense. So if I were to put, this is what it looks like. If I change my landscape gradient overlay to normal, back again to normal, you'll see what it looks like. It's just a big black smudge that I put on it, right? Which is affecting everything underneath. So when I put it back to overlay, we can see that. And this is what it looks like without it. but it really made the, the color way too intense. So let me take the opacity of it down until I'm happier with it, because we tend to overdo the burn. There we go. So about 41% is as much as I want that shadow. Now, if the lighting were hitting from this angle, and there's a cast shadow over here of my creature, I would move that overlay layer up. And so you can see what that would look like if I move that up on top of everything. And I actually do want it to hit maybe the, the slight edge of that rock. There we go, because my creature is above that rock and probably casting a shadow on it. But I don't want it to go higher than that. Right, so I don't want it to be just like this dark pit for my creature, but I, I want it right about there. So you find where the best placement is of your burn layer. Okay, then you can also um, erase away from it, right? And erasing away is the same thing as bringing back <laughs> just the layers behind. Now, I think I also want to burn it a little bit on the back leg, between the back leg and that foreground rock. Just the midtones. This also keeps you from going too far because it's already a gradient. And then I can try burning the highlights as well. And I can see if I want to bring the opacity up right, or take it down. And I find the right level. And that feels about right. So without ever changing my creature, always keeping it as a smart layer, I've done a lot to the setting to make a place for it. And even with my creature not there, that setting still makes sense. So now I am ready to change my creature. So what do I do? I save it. 